Hey folks, it's Chris with LG Squared. I'm at the Contemporary High Performance Home in Marietta, Georgia. And those 2x4s you see sticking out past the face of the, the walls there, that those are actually on top of the peel and stick membrane that covers the roof sheathing. And that was intentional. We did that from in the design phase to for two reasons, two primary reasons, and one is to eliminate or reduce the total number of structural penetrations through our building enclosure, and also to uh, minimize or eliminate our thermal bridging. A thermal bridge is anything that penetrates the building enclosure that is in contact with both the inside and the outside, and it creates a bridge for heat flow. So if it's hot, that heat flows to the inside where it's cooler, and, this, and in the winter when it's cold, that heat flows from uh, the inside to the outside. It's always a, a high pressure to low pressure thing. So when uh, the uh, heat is always a higher, higher pressure situation, and where it's cold, it's a lower pressure situation. So the heat will flow from hot to cold. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how we did that on this contemporary home. And to get our overhangs, we have on the front of the house, we have 18 inch overhangs and on all of the sides, we have eight inches, uh, eight inch overhang. We're up on the roof now. We're gonna take a look at how these outriggers are attached to the structure and integrated into our thermal enclosure. But before I do that, I want to point out that this house is insulated entirely to the outside of its structure. So zero cavity insulation in this home. We've got four inches on the walls, seven inches on the roof, and we're going to show you how we've got how we make that transition and how these outriggers integrate into that insulation to provide our overhang without penetrating the structure uh, and, and creating a thermal bridge or uh, a penetration that we would have to, to seal. This is the front of the house where we have an 18 inch overhang and that's 18 inches past the four inches of rock wool insulation. Uh, on, in these areas where we have this overhang we have six foot long outriggers and then on the sides and in the back where we have more of a uh, we have an eight inch overhang, we've uh, used a four foot outrigger. And of course on the outside and the interior perimeter of these outriggers, we do have a sort of a rim board, okay? Uh, this, is, this is representative here. This is four inches of two inch, or excuse me, four layers of two inch in, of rock wool, top rock DD insulation. Uh, this, is, this is just for our little discussion today but I just want to so this is representing the insulation we're going to put on this roof but uh, in this case this is eight inches but we'll use seven two layers of three and a half inch that first layer will be flush with the top of this top of these outriggers and then the second layer sits on top of that and then we'll take a one by four and set it on top of that top layer at a 45 degree angle and attach a nine inch screw through the one by four, through the insulation, and down into the top cord of the roof trusses inside the structure. And that's, that's the same all over the roof. And then on the walls, we line up our one by fours vertically with the studs inside, and we take a seven inch screw, and we run through the one by four, through the four inches of insulation, and into a two by four stud, okay? So on the front of the house, we have where we have the, the, the greater overhang, we have six foot long outriggers, okay? And these are attached with two metal clips. These are Simpson clips. Um, uh, they've got four screws. We've got four screws up into this rim board and then we've got one screw down into uh, the truss below. We've also got one of these roofing screws that runs through that through that rim board down into down into the truss the other clip that we have 
is up towards the front of the house, or up towards the front, we have blocking down below that we attach those to. Now, the reason we can't go directly into a truss every time is because this, the outriggers are laid out with two foot clearance between each outrigger. And that's because our insulation comes in two foot by four foot pieces. Uh, it, it can also come in, you can also get it in four foot by four foot or four foot by eight foot. Uh, and it, but we've, we've gone with a two foot by four foot uh, increment for the outriggers here for, so we can get structural integrity of these outriggers and so we can just easily slip in a two foot by four foot piece and not have to do any trimming or cutting to save, to save some time. Our structural engineer has designed these outriggers with both with two clips each. Um, here on the side where we have our eight, eight inch overhang, we actually can make contact or can attach right directly to the, uh, to the, to the trusses. So we have these clips are attached to the side of each outrigger instead of at the rim board and then the outrigger. So these two, these two are on the inside of the outrigger and our truss is right below this and right below this okay so the insulation then will cover will fill in this fill in this gap fill in this uh, this cavity here and then be another layer on top of that where the outriggers stop we've got all this field here this is just peel and stick on top of sheathing we'll fill that up with two layers of three and a half inch top rock dd from rockwool then we'll continue those one by fours at a 45 degree angle across those two layers of insulation and use our nine inch screw to attach down through the one by four through the insulation and into the truss. This is the high part of the roof here. And then if you take a look around the back side, just at more of these how that works out. So that's how the outriggers work here at the contemporary home uh, in Marietta, Georgia. Uh, it shows how we have eliminated our penetrations and thermal bridging uh, by, but, but still having overhangs that help protect the building and give it the aesthetics of that contemporary uh, home. If you have any questions about what we've done, just feel free to ask them in the comments below. And hope you've enjoyed it, and I appreciate you stopping by, checking it out. We'll see you next time from the High Performance Home in Marietta, Georgia. This is Chris with LG Squared. Take care.